like, share, subscribe. Hey y'all, welcome back. Number 44, we are dealing with these complex numbers, okay? So right off the bat, let me explain what I is. I is just a, uh, a symbol that represents the number square root of negative one. You know, early on in your math career, your teacher may have told you, hey, you can't take the square root of negative number, you know, because a positive times a positive is positive, and a negative times a negative is also positive. So how could you possibly take the square root of a negative number if no such number exists? Well, um, joke's on them. The number does exist. It's just not a real number. It's not going to be a number that we find on the number line. It's not going to be 5, 6, negative 5, none of that. It's actually going to be a number that falls into a, a new classification of numbers, which are called complex numbers. So this I is what we call an imaginary number. That's why we use the letter I. And it represents the square root of negative 1. This is going to come into play later. Um, so I'm just going to kind of set this to the side for now. Um, but first, we need to simplify this expression, which really doesn't take any understand. You don't have to understand the I. You could just like treat it like it's an X and just kind of multiply these together, okay? Um, just like you would normally, like you would in an Algebra 1 class. If it just says, you know, simplify this expression, that's how we're going to start this out. Although at the end, this whole square root of negative 1 business is going to come into play. Okay, so um, first we need to multiply. Okay, multiplication comes before addition uh, in our order of operations. So I'm going to multiply each term in this first binomial by each term in the second binomial. You may know this process by uh, the acronym FOIL, first, outside, inside, last, to kind of help you keep track of what you're multiplying here. But basically, we just want to distribute the I to both of these terms, and we want to distribute the 1 to both of these terms. So I times 3 is going to be 3I. I times negative I is going to be negative I squared. 1 times 3 is going to be 3. And 1 times negative I is going to be negative I. Okay, so that's all this. And then I'm going to, since we're just adding these other two terms, I'm going to drop the parentheses and just write this as 2i minus 1. So now we've got this expression, and I'm going to combine my like terms. So I've got this i squared, this negative i squared. I'm just going to leave that out to the front. And then I've got 3i minus i. It's going to be 2i, so I'm just going to keep track here. 3i minus 1i would be 2i, plus two more i's would be 4i's, okay? So we got 4i here, and then let's look at our constants. We've got 3 minus 1 would be 2. All right, so, um, so yeah, we've got uh, this, but that doesn't really look like any of our answer choices, right? Notice none of the answer choices has an i squared in it. So what's the deal with that? Well, this is going to go back to the fact that i is the square root of negative 1. If i is the square root of negative 1, then i squared would be the square root of negative 1 squared. And as we know, when you square a square root, effectively what that does is just cancel out the square root. Squaring square roots, um, as long as we're not dealing with, you know, they're, they're sort of pseudo-inverse functions. They cancel each other out. Um, yeah, if you square any, so like for instance, if you have the square root of 100, that'd be 10. And if you square that, you go back to 100. So the square root of negative 1 squared is just going to be negative 1. And so that's why you don't see any squ i squareds in here, is because they've simplified that out already. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this as negative, negative 1 plus 4i plus 2. Negative, negative 1 is really just positive 1. And now we can combine our like terms. 1 plus 2 is 3. So we get our final answer, 4i plus 3. And our answer choice uh, we can find here is letter, what is it, D. 3 plus 4i. They have it flipped. Um, addition is commutative. A lot of times you'll see that the, you know, just sort of conventionally the imaginary part of this complex number is going to be written to the right. Um, you know, that doesn't really matter to be quite honest with you. Uh, these two statements are equivalent. Um, so yeah, anyway, our answer is going to be D. And that's it for 44. Uh, thanks for watching, and y'all have a great day.